Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on uh, YouTube, um, Medium and Daniel Rose for that tech. So in this video, um, continuing the theme of backups onto my new Synology uh, uh, N20 Plus NAS, which is really, really cool. And I'm just going through all the different, uh, exploring all the different things myself that you can do. And in the process of that, showing some backups. And what I want to talk about in this video today is WordPress backups. You might be thinking WordPress backups uh, isn't that kind of simple. Uh, aren't there a lot of YouTube videos about it? And actually the answer to those things is yes. But what I am showing you uh, that might be slightly different in uh, today's video is uh, how to create your own WordPress. And actually not just WordPress, um, just because a lot of people uh, use WordPress um, that is kind of synonymous for a lot of people with websites. In other words, their websites, whatever they're hosting those websites on, it's basically just a WordPress. Uh, it's basically just a WordPress install. There may be a couple, you may be using the cPanel email. A lot of people actually are not even doing that and it's just all being handled through, uh, you know, G Suite or Office 365. So there's nothing up there except WordPress, but there are people that do have other things on their web hosting. It's a shared, in a shared web hosting environment. And um, what I'm gonna show you in this in this method, I think that the, WordPress backup plugins and uh, you know there are definitely a few of them uh, there's updraft plus which is excellent um, I do recommend all of these and what I'm gonna say is that um, the 321 backup methodology which I keep coming back to in these videos um, basically what you're looking at here is uh, a methodology for keeping your data safe now it's not necessarily the best approach for uh, for example having a quick backup strategy and this is what's built into a lot of these backup plugins there I've discussed on previous videos the difference between full backups incremental backups and differential backups and basically and an incremental backup strategy every time you back up you're just backing up from the last incremental backup that means that the backups are the backup files are light the backup the backups run quickly because not very much it's only looking at what's changed but you need this whole big succession of uh, backups uh, in the event that, for example, you you were starting from scratch somewhere on a new host. So it's great that if you're using a WordPress site and you want to roll back changes that were made two or three days ago and uh, muck something up and you don't want to go through the whole troubleshooting process. You, want, you, you know, you didn't change the site for two days, just roll back to a um, an incremental backup and uh, restore from that. So that's perfect. The kind of scenario I'm looking at in these in this approach is more um, concerned with people that want to have a copy of their own data for backup purposes because you don't want to trust your data ever to somebody on the cloud a third party and most hosting co most hosting companies are there are they backing up your data yes but is it your it's ultimately your responsibility and uh, it's just prudent to have your own data not to put your faith in the in the hosting company there have been cases of hosting companies that have lost users data and if that happens even if your host offers a backup service and it may be a lovely backup service it may not actually be 321 uh it won't be 321 compliant probably uh but it may not even even you know meet the first criteria of that because it could all just be running little incremental snapshots on the server so 321 kind of takes things i guess you could say to the next level uh, used a lot in sort of enterprise backup planning. Uh, basically, you have three copies of all critical data, business critical data, mission critical data. And in the case of that WordPress site, let's say that ho that's hosting your e-commerce website, that's one, that's the primary data source. And uh, 321 calls for two, maintaining two copies of uh, of that data. Now, the backup, backed up data needs, needs to be on two different storage types, right? So we have two backups and let's, split up again here and uh, we're going to say that these each need to be on a different type of storage media so remember when i said that even if you have a host that has a backup functionality and many have very nice ones built in so you might be you might be a bit confused wondering there's a wordpress backup plugins my host gives me this backup are you, like what are you telling me that i need a third one so i'm not i'm not telling you that i'm just i'm just pointing out why you may still want to do your own backup approach even in light of the above and that's because um, you may just be getting one uh, one backup uh, through your host, and it may not be even on different storage media. 
by which I mean that that backup, one of these tools that run on the server, could just be backing up to the server that your um, that your website's host on. So that's actually on the same storage media, even though let's get technical for a second. Your host is you know running a professional data center with RAID, um, which means that if they have disk failure of some type, that they're, they're not going to lose your data. Um, they're you know that's the whole idea behind RAID. Um, but it's still it's still redundancy is not equal to backups and uh, if the data is lost or something and you want it to go back to or you want to roll back to a previous point or recover the data from a previous point uh, you still can't rely on that basically finally you want to have one thing offsite so if you're we're talking about WordPress backups here so clearly um, unless you're hosting that WordPress site on a server on premises in your own house then it's already the primary data source is offsite, but that's still under the three two one rule. Uh, we still need even if even if our primary data source is offsite, we still need to create a backup with another offsite data source. And using uh, Synology's uh, NAS and its wonderful cloud sync technology, we're and uh, I forgot to mention Backblaze B two. Uh, we're going to be pushing pushing that. Uh, the backup that we take up to offsite. So that's going to give us our 3 to one compliant backup strategy. Now, uh, in order to get, to get the show started and taking a backup, um, I am going to uh, just quickly log into my hosting over here um, and just show you. Now, this is based on, uh, this is this really, this whole kind of, um, I don't like calling these tutorials, but demonstration is applicable if you're a shared hosting customer. If you're doing something like, you know, Wix or one of these all you can one builders, and you pro you probably don't even have a cPanel. I don't use Wix or all you can. Uh, I keep saying all you can, all you can eat. Uh, you know these kind of click and point uh, building tools. But um, uh, if you're on, if you're doing something a little bit more custom and you're you have a WordPress site on a typical shared hosting environment, then you are probably going to have a cPanel. And uh, the cPanel I'm going to open up for my shared hosting is uh, danielrosehill.tech. So without further ado, so this is my cPanel, and uh, as you can see, um, there are there is a Jet Backup, uh, which is one of these, as I described, the kind of incremental backup tools that your that hosts often provide nowadays. So I want to take a look at what it is. You can see it does say it has full account backups and um you can just tell straight away by the un, you know this would be such uh, un, uh unsustainable amount of data if these were if it was if these were 30 full backups so it's clearly not that and it tells you actually the type of backup is incremental um so what i did um just before starting this is i down is i requested i clicked on this generate download button and uh just to take a look at what's going to come out of this so i'm just going to click on that now pay attention to these files. You can see it's a 612 uh, megabyte archive that is being downloaded, and that's the latest incremental backup. But the tool that we are going to be taking a look at is, um, and I just did that in order to compare and contrast the difference between what we're going to get here. So this cPanel has a um, has a functionality for downloading a full account backup, and you can see below it there is just downloading the MySQL, downloading email forwarders, uh, and then there's these little restore boxes here if you're going to restore stuff. Now, basically, my point about backing up at cPanel and just to explain the difference from backing up at WordPress. WordPress is a, uh, as most people know, it's basically a server-side software. It's a piece of software that you install. Nowadays, most people are installing it through something like Softaculous. Uh, it's dynamic, so it's got a bunch of files in there, uh, themes containing PHP files, plugins containing PHP files, pulling in dynamic content uh, such as posts, authors, metadata, all that kind of stuff. That gets stored in a MySQL database. So fundamentally, WordPress equals files plus database. Now, um, I'm explaining that just to explain what you're going to get in that full account backup that that's going to go beyond what you're going to get in these WordPress backup plugins, the likes of Updraft and Duplicator. You're going to miss, firstly, if you have any other things in your shared hosting. So I don't know, 
let's just say there's a chance that you've put on a CRM or an ERP or some other uh, server script that you you know picked up using Softaculous. You're not obviously if you just use a WordPress plugin, you're not going to be downloading those. You're not going to be backing those up. Excuse me. Um, if you have any files that are not uh, encased within the WordPress directory, that's WP content, then they're not going to be backed up. If you have any my other, etc., etc. If you're using cPanel email, that means you haven't gone and set up your DNS records and used an external email provider such as Office 365 or G Suite. Um, then uh, the emails themselves and the email addresses and the email forwarders, uh, which is all this, all this stuff here basically, that's not going to be included. So just taking a backup of WordPress to an external location uh, is fine if you're doing small incremental snapshots with the idea of uh, quickly rolling back changes. If, however, you're trying to institute a 3 to one complaint backup strategy whose goal is to give you control of your data, that you're going to have a copy so and you're going to hedge against the best, the, the, the possibility, uh, I should say, that this, uh, that this hosting company is going to go under and you want to have a good full backup image of your WordPress site that you're going to take, I don't know, every, uh, every couple of months, um, then this is the DIY approach that you might be interested in. So I've gone ahead and created that full backup before this video actually started and uh, it's going to be sitting ready, ready and waiting for me. Now you can see firstly that's a 1.1 1 .1, uh, gigabyte image and that's just to contrast. That's an unusually heavy um, incremental backup that we downloaded earlier. Uh, I think I just let the, I set up the site then let it sit for a while and then did the imp import in one day. So that's probably uh, this backup probably contains almost everything that's actually there. Um, so looking at what's in there, you can see that uh, this incremental backup um, divides the, basically the entire cPanel into like your cron jobs, uh, basically everything you might have there, your SSL keys um, and the files itself. So it is a comprehensive backup, but it is uh, incremental. So this wouldn't have um, everything it needed to needed to restore no cron job set up um so we're just i'm just going to again pause the video as we wait for this backup image uh, to download uh, from the server all right so this guy has just wrapped up its uh its download and while that has been going on i have gone ahead and entered into my synology um, nas and this uh, little program is called dsm now what this is basically a um, nas to give you a um, visualization of this here uh, it's basically a, um, it's kind of like a file server. Uh, it's a little device like this, hardware device that you fill up with hard drives and you connect this to the, uh, to your ethernet and it's on your network. So it's basically a server optimized for storing files um, that basically lives on your network. So um, this has Synology, this kind of um, operating system that they give you has a nice little utility called Cloud Sync and uh, this allows you to basically pair up I'm just going to go into it here it allows you to pair up um, cloud storage repositories um, with uh, the NAS so it'll, it's going to create a two-way thing so what I've done is I've created a demo bucket in B2 now B2 is a uh, cloud storage that is uh, operated by Backblaze um, they're specialized in backups and recovery that kind of thing and I created a demo bucket uh, just for the purpose of this demonstration. So that's in the cloud. And if I can basically, uh, all I need to do from this point, we're almost actually finished, is to uh, get that backup, the full account backup that I just downloaded, that one gigabyte file. Uh, I need to put it onto a, um, a share that I've created um, because this sync thing works between uh, a cloud and then it syncs to a share on your uh, NES. So if I go into my settings here, uh, overview, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, sorry, task list. And you can see the local path is Daniel Desktop Backups. That's a local share I've set up. And uh, anything I put there is going to be synced up to the B2 in the cloud. So let's just go back to 321 for a second. And uh, I will use for this my trusty uh, github documentation my master backup strategy so called um, if we go back to 321 uh, and let's just say this linux backup is our hosting 
we have uh, created um, it's in the cloud and we need two more backups we are putting one up to our offsite and uh, we're going to in the process we're actually going to be firstly um, taking our on-site backup putting that into our NAS and then we're going this way in fact and then that's going to give us our uh, off-site and that will mean that we will have uh, if you go back to the 321 rule we're going to have our hosting and two in, two existing copies full backups um, that can be used to restore from scratch no need they're not differential they're not in they're not incremental like the WordPress backup plugins a lot of them and like a lot of the backup tools the host add on they're full self-standing backups which will mean that they're heavy so we might need to uh, repeat this process periodically and uh, only keep one snapshot but they will each snapshot will have everything we needed to restore in the event it would be required um, and uh, they're going to be on different storage media this is on whatever infrastructure b2 is hosted on and this is uh, going to be kept on my nas at home so two different storage media um, that means if B2 fails, we're gonna. This is gonna be okay. And realistically, B2 will not fail. But if my NAS failed, then I would have the copy on B2. Um, so what I've just done here is I have called up in the. Uh, this should be an interesting comparison. The guy on my left is the incremental backup that we got from the host, and the guy on the right is the uh, full backup uh, that's just finished downloading. So uh, as you can see, they actually contain, if I'm not mistaken, all the same, f all the same files and directories. Um, but this is, um, this was the incremental backup. Um, and if you subtly compare the files as well, you notice that in the full backup, and sorry, that's the one on the left. I got, I think I may have got confused there. Um, there's things like bandwidth db.json. This file here, 146 bytes and uh, that is not featuring in the incremental backup because this is capturing the full backup everything that existed from the start and this is only what changed between this and the last incremental backup so if bandwidth db.json did not change then it's not then it wouldn't have been included in the in this incremental backup that jet backup ran for us so jumping back into uh synology over here for one second I've just popped into Daniel's demo share. That's the one that syncs with B2, verify there's nothing in it. So now I'm just going to search for that on the network. So uh, in PC Man FM, which is the default uh, file manager in uh, LXDE, which is really not so much in use anymore, in, even in Linux world, it's been subsumed, uh, supplanted, I should say, rather, by uh, LXQT. Uh, but this is what it looks like. You can go to go to network and um, I can click on um, it'll identify identify straight away the NAS the Synology NAS on the network and then what I need to do to connect with it is give it my credentials so I'm just going to do that quickly and then log in that's been done and uh, immediately you can see all the uh, shares I've created have shown up including Daniel demo share so that's really it and you can see now um, it's using AFP and the nice thing about this PC Man FF, uh, F, PC Man FM is that uh, you can see it makes it very easy to see the protocol that the file manager is connecting from. Um, so I am just going to open in a new tab, the desktop, and uh, that is actually download was the not full one. So this is the full cPanel backup, and it's just a copy and paste. You can make life difficult for yourself by doing this on the on the command line it's a gigabyte so it's going to take a couple of minutes just to move that into the uh into the synology and what's going to happen then and uh, i'm going to pause the video here and uh because syncing that up to the cloud is going to take a while this will then sync up to uh, b2 uh, automatically and uh, once it's in b2 then uh, it's going to be and this will run as soon as as soon as this finishes, this reaches 100%. This is showing that all my clouds are currently in sync. Um, but when this hits 100%, this guy is going to start going and uh, we'll be able to watch as it moves up to the cloud. Okay, the big moment's about to occur. It's just reached 100% our ticker. So um, if we do a refresh in Daniel's demo share, I'm now looking at the, if I can look in the, f the folder in uh, PC Man FM, I can see that it's in there. And this is a view uh, from, ah, I can do a refresh here. And there we go. We can see that the backup 
um, has been loaded here. Now this guy, the cloud sync, is about to start moving. Hopefully, so let's just check that. Okay, so I've just uh, checked the connection, um, which in actual fact uh, it was connected to the um, wrong remote bucket in B2. So I just fixed that, and uh, that just turned as soon as I changed the um, uh, as soon as I created the new uh, B2 bucket here in CloudSync um, and made the connection almost instant within literally a second uh, this changed from synced to syncing and uh, you can see the uh, icon is in there and it's just got that kind of tiny uh, tiny file in the root of the folder and um, it's syncing so that's now going to be I'm not going to actually show this process because of the fact that my internet is uh, approximately uh, three or four megabytes per second upload speed and therefore it would take hours for this it's probably going to take hours for this to actually um, get up to the cloud but that's how it works um, this is in summary a 3 to one compliant 3 to one compliance calls for taking uh, two copies of every important primary data source two different storage media one off-site um, WordPress backups consist really of files and uh, a database but um, it's of interest to a lot of people to take a full backup of the entire cPanel instead of just backing up the WordPress application. That means you're not using the WordPress plugins or even the stuff your host offers. I recommend you use the two things in parallel. Those incremental backups can be very, very useful. Uh, but if you want to uh, take your own backups on your own independent cloud storage, on-site storage media, then uh, this is a way to do it. In summary, you need to go into cPanel uh, in summary, you need to go into cPanel, and you need to um, you need to use the backup functionality. Pull down a full account backup, and uh, then you can download that. Uh, if you're using an NAS, you can put it into a nice sync. If you're not, such as Cloud Sync with that Synology DMS, or if you're not using an NAS, then you can just uh, manually upload um, that download to some kind of cloud storage repository and uh, that'll, that'll achieve basically the same thing for you. Um, thanks for watching and uh, any questions I'm available at danielrosel.co.il.